afternoon, my friends. Hello and welcome to another WP Guru thing. I'm, of course, your gracious host, Jay vs. Lewis. With me here today is Julia. She's monitoring that uh, stream on the laptop next to me. And I hope you're all very well. Dream Lab, Biscuits, Dave Davis, Christina, and uh, have I forgotten anybody? That, that may that may well be it. I think uh, I think that's it. And to go and of course to everyone else who's watching, who's not joining in the chat, which is totally fine as well. So uh, today, I've uh, first of all we've discovered a big box of chocolates in a pound shop. It's so large. I got to show it to you. It's it's back there, and it's it's much larger than than it looks. Let me go over there. It is so big. Woohoo! This is just crazy, and uh, I haven't even tried it yet. Julia had a piece earlier, and it's just—it's just so big. I gotta show you. This is an amazing box of chocolates by Whitman. So this is one of our chocolate manufacturers here in the U.S., and it's got this massive menu of what each piece is. So it's totally crazy. We couldn't resist. It was uh, reduced from like sixty dollars to about ten, and it's just—you know—you you gotta have some of that in your house. So there we go. That'll sit here with us. And in case anyone gets hungry for chocolate, I'm more than happy to send one over there. There we go. It's kind of, it's almost tough for me to get settled into this latency that YouTube offers again, because we did this test on Mixer last Monday. Thanks for everyone who, who joined in. It is just such a different ball game. Literally instant communication there. And here we have this about eight second delay. So I'm excited to do more and uh, we shall do that. We shall try another test next Monday. If you're free, join me. I'm going to try this thing called Restream, which means I can stream to one destination and then Restream servers will transmit the signal to Mixer, YouTube, Twitch, Picato, Facebook, anywhere. So I'd love to try that out. And of course, I need uh, I need uh, willing audience participants with that. So if you're free Monday, 4 p.m., please join me for another round of Portal. So that's what's coming up today. We're going to bonbons indeed, biscuits. Yes. Today, I'm going to do something. I'll see if I can bring up that uh, that little what's it called here that screenshot I've made earlier if I can remember where I've put it probably in thumbnails was that it yes it's all about fog planes and uh, here we have a render of stonemasons urban what's it urban futures set number six last week it was on sale at das 40 percent off I thought that's fantastic I bought the sets number five and number six and they look absolutely stunning, like all stonemason works. And uh, here we have a render. It's a split on the left-hand side. It's the render as it comes out of the computer. And on the right-hand side, I've overlaid what's known as a fog plane. And you can do these effects in Photoshop. It's no problem, really, to, to generate something similar in Photoshop. But if you want to avoid that, it's very easy to, to do this little tweak I'm going to show you today so that you can do that directly in Das Studio. And that should be you know should be should be exciting should be interesting so what we'll do is i'll show you the principle first in das studio of how to do it and then we're going to repeat the process and i'm going to create another little fog plane in carrara this is kind of almost a follow-up from what we did uh, when i showed you how to make the animated fog in carrara so it's it's using still images from that or just just any old uh, fog that you generate with literally anything and uh, i hope i hope it's going to work out i've tried Tried it once or twice. I hope it's. I hope it's gonna. I hope it's gonna work out. Well, yes, uh, Dreamlab uh, stream restream. They have something. The the way this works apparently, and this is why I want to try this out. Apparently, you connect. You you open a Streamlabs or a Streamlabs. Sorry, a stream restream account, and then you go and connect. Your, all your other accounts with Restream. So the idea is that uh, you exchange the stream keys and somehow it pulls in the chat from the other areas and brings them centrally into Restream and puts them back. So if you have a viewer on Twitch who joins the conversation, he's just gonna be there just as much as a viewer from YouTube or from Mixer. So they all have a little logo in the front that tells us where they're joining from. And it sounds like another one of those interesting things that I can't quite believe it's free, but that's why I wanted to try it out. So let's see what we can do there together. So let me show you the principle uh, first here by heading over to, oh, actually I haven't got my, uh, what's it called, my um, 
my thing there we go that's that's my thing here my my what's it called the orange circle there the orange highlighter that makes it much easier for us to see what's going down so let me go into the smart content and bring up my environment here i've got urban futures five and six perhaps we'll use set six and uh, download or load in the ira version there That's exactly what I thought. It's going to freak me out. If you have to monitor more than one chat window, that's that's terrible. I keep missing things with just one chat window. So yeah, it's it's. I think it's it's going to be good if that's um, uh, consolidated into one thing. Point of focus. That's the one exactly. Pointerfocus.com is it? I believe that's the that's the one where we can uh, where we can get it. You can navigate any which way you like. I'm going to close this down here so we've got a really nice big open window and we can either just navigate around, pick a stream, pick a stream, pick a point in the scene by just scrolling the mouse wheel or do what I like, uh, what I also like doing is uh, utilizing this thing at the top of the screen here. That's the keyboard navigation. If that's enabled, that's just a toggle on and off. If that's enabled, you can use the W, A, S and D keys to move forward and backwards. That's cool. And then if in addition to that, you can also uh, enable this thing, which is the screen navigator tool. And currently I'm using the 3D navigator tool. That means when I click into the scene, I will select objects here, left, right and center. And I can move them and manipulate them with this 3D manipulator. But if I click this thing here, the scene navigator, then that thing goes away and I can't select objects anymore. And instead I can left click and drag to look around in my scene. Whoops, hello, lady, excellent. Looks like real graffiti. I don't know where he gets this from, but it's just it's just absolutely funky. Um, and with that, with that combination of the keyboard navigation and the scene navigator tool, you can now literally navigate in your scene as if this was a first person shooter game. Very cool, strafe and have a look in the back alleys and literally walk around the set. That is very cool, I really love that. It's a very nice addition. I think in Das Studio 4.7 that was made. 4.7, 4.8, 4.7, I think. Let's pick, let's pick a nice spot here. Something maybe along those lines. Something that shows us a bit of a bit of depth, in which we can probably make the camera a little bit wider. And since this is just a perspective view, I can do that by heading over to this little. Uh, zoom icon and instead of left clicking on it I'll right click on it right click and drag on this that'll change the focal length of your perspective view very cool tip that so it's not an exact science so if you had a camera or if you'd convert that into a camera you'd have the actual the, the actual focal length here but so this is just like a visual thing how you want to do it you can do it really extreme like this is kind of crazy but you can do it so it's <laughs> don't go crazy yeah, something something like this. You can also go up and down on this. Yeah, maybe this is this could be this could be our scene. That's nice. And we'll do this uh, so that this kind of renders with the fog plane in the front there. Um, I got to show you something else because currently and for the next week or two, I'll have two GTX RTX. Oh, uh, that's, I don't know what I'm going to do that. But I have two RTX 2080 graphics cards in my Z800 workstation. That's very exciting for me because it means I can use two of those cards side by side. And there's this little utility that comes up, this thing here. And that allows me to keep an eye. Oops, I'm so sorry. I was on the wrong button there. I'm, I can keep an eye on the temperature of these cards because uh, one of them seems to get hot and sometimes when I render in iRay then my computer just resets and that's never good so I'm just gonna have to I just wanted to make sure they're still both under clock because this under clocking thing seems to avoid that but I need to keep an eye on it because this value isn't saved properly so just thought I'd let you know. In case the stream goes away, then that is usually what happens. If I go and uh, switch this over to iRay now, it could well happen that the computer just goes and then you know I'm gone. I'll still be on the chat. So uh, if that happens, you know I hope uh, I hope it's not going to take long. But if that happens, then yes, that that's probably the reason for that. So right now I'm in the perspective view. The scene's going to be a little bit washed out. It looks like we're getting a bit of the 
headlamp feature from the perspective view so to change all that around I'm gonna head over here and create a new camera I'm gonna use the copy active view settings up here and when I do that I have a camera in the same place as my perspective view let me go close the whole scene down and then switch up into my camera there we go that hasn't changed anything but with that I can now go and make some changes of my own so on the headlamp for example I'm gonna go and switch the headlamp feature off and that means I'm only gonna see the current IBL feature that's active and I don't really want to see that either because the IBL first of all it doesn't draw a sky so we need to take care of that but I'm also going to make sure that we're not going to use the IBL we're going to use the sun and sky uh, that that's more of a more of a look I'm going for here I believe uh, stonemason may have provided light sets for this but if so I haven't found them yet so I've, I've only just bought this last week so there we go so under render settings here I'm going to head over to environment and that's where most of the magic happens here. At the very top, we've got the dome and sky, and that's the environment mode. I'm gonna change that over to sun and sky, so that I'm gonna go and not use the environment image. In fact, I'm gonna use uh, sunlight from a place that we can see down here. So this is the exact date, and this is the exact time. And there's also the longitude and latitude sliders here. So that will, it's not an exact science, but it will give you a longitude and latitude on planet Earth. I would imagine it's planet Earth. And then you can give it a day and a correct time. And you can even give it like, you know, all kinds of other things at the bottom here. So I'd say, uh, let's, let's move into the year 2019, I guess, which is, um, what, what is the date today? What's the date today? It's the 17th, 14th, 15th of May, 17th. Look at that time melts away like the snow and sun. So, and it's also currently 20 past four here. So let's call it 16, whoops, let's call it 1630 maybe. And we'll see what that looks like. Look at that. This is now as if it's right now. I'm not sure which location this is, like 40.76. That's not really geo coordinates here, but it's, you know, it's something, it, it makes the scene look nicer already. You don't have to put the time of day. You can leave the 2015 date in there. That's fine. And then you can just go and see what a difference an hour makes. So I think this is already pretty cool. I might, I might leave that, but uh, just to get a, get a better, idea of what the sunlight does there you can always change this in an hour interval so i'm going to change this to maybe 1730 and that means the light goes over there now so let's try 1830 oops it's not very forgiving here with this with those keyboard shortcuts okay so that that means the sun keeps going over there now it's also going further down so that we're hitting more of the shadow in the scene that may not be what we want so I'd like a bit of a bit of light here so maybe I'm gonna make it slightly earlier see what three o'clock looks like well there we go three o'clock looks much nicer maybe I'll try 330 let's try that I think I'm gonna go with 330 here that's cool so it's like an hour earlier than it is right now <laughs> exciting so that's a good that's a good mood of light that I like here. But the only other thing is um, uh, is <laughs> right. Well done, guys. This is you know your you know your geographical coordinates. There, I love it. Very nice. Very nice. The only other thing I want to take care of is the missing sky. Currently, this is going to be rendered transparent. So if you'd render this out, you can replace it in Photoshop. But we can also choose to draw the sky dome. And that's up here that's also under environment and that's just this button here draw dome and if you click that then dash studio goes ahead and renders something in there so this is not transparent anymore it'll either be the ibl picture that's on the sky dome or it's going to just be a sky color so in our case we're just getting you know nice non non-cloudy sky there <laughs> yes, I wish there was a way to add these coordinates directly into Das Studio because uh, right now we just have I don't know forty point seven six and minus hundred eleven. That is is that is that uh, what is that north and west or is that I, I don't I don't really know. It's just a, it's just a slider with with values. I must have a look. This I, if this is accurate, it's probably going to be Utah. I would imagine where like Salt Lake City, Utah. That's where Das is being made. So <laughs> there we go.
I think we'll leave this scene as it is and I'm also going to go and save it just in case some crashing does happen. So there we go. I've made a little folder earlier. I'm going to put that in here. I'm going to call it Urban Cast, perhaps. Shattercast, Fogcast, Urban Cast. There we go. That's it. So let's save that and then let's worry about that fog plane so uh, the fog plane is just it's just a basic primitive that will plonk in front of the camera and then we'll add a bit of uh, magic texture to that so i'm going to go and get out of ira here briefly so that i can uh, do a bit more positioning here i'm also going to go switch over to my perspective view that means i have the preview lights again if you ever needed the preview lights back in your scene so if i wanted to have them on in the camera it'll be just Control l i believe that uh, switches them on and off i thought it did let's, let's try it out shall we oh there we go Control l switches them on and off so i'm going to go leave them off here in the camera because they're always on in the perspective view anyway so that's that's okay uh, let me see where my camera actually is there it is that's my camera and i'll see where that fog plane comes in so i'm going to go over and create a new primitive there we go and the primitive will be a plane and it usually comes up with y positive that means the plane is lying down flat but I'm going to use a X positive so that it comes in rotated already. And one meter by one meter is just fine. We don't need any particular divisions. And there we can see it. It's right in the middle of my scene. Well, right now I can't actually select anything. That's because I'm still in the scene navigator mode, which, leads, which allows me to move around the scene here. So I'm going to go and click that uh, 3D universal tool again. And that lets me select that plane. And that lets me now position the plane. So I'll have to kind of eyeball it here. Perhaps I'll do that from the top top view. And if I if the plane would be very far away from my camera, and I'd like to see both of my objects in relation, then I can head over and both mark the camera and the plane. So with a shift key, you just select both of these and then select that little square icon. And that means the Dash Studio is now going to frame both of these objects into the viewport. And that's what it's done here. So we've got the camera here. We've got the plane here just about. So now select the plane and move it slightly closer to the camera. Now we can go and do that again. Sometimes it's not ideal with many objects kind of overlapping it, but you get the basic gist of, of where that thing is. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm going to meet her. Maybe the stream meets her. Who knows? <laughs> so. Uh, oops. Plane, yes, camera, where's the camera? Where is the camera? I totally saw it a minute ago. Oh, okay, cool. So the plane is already in front of the camera. It's just very, uh, very close to it. So let's go and make sure it's rotated properly into this, into about that it's also it's a bit of a skewed perspective here right now because we're a little bit uh, wider than we perhaps should be but it's okay it's okay now I've, pre I've prepared this as a 16 by 9 shot so i'm going to make sure the plane is also going to be 16 by 9 aspect ratio it doesn't have to be accurate but we can make it fairly accurate so uh, just head over to parameters and have a look at the scale tab here so uh, we can we can cheat a little bit because we don't have accurate dimensions. We can just say the I believe the the Z scale is this. That's perfect. So that's going to be um, our 16. So let's say 160. And then the Y scale is the other dimension. That'll just be 90. And that'll be 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And now if we need to make it bigger or smaller, we can always use the overall scale. I think right now it's not quite accurately lined up. There is a much, much easier way to do this. If you add the camera first in the center of the scene and then also add that plane, then you can just you know move them absolutely accurately uh, in front of one another. You can do that. It's, it's not absolutely necessary for what we're doing. So I'm just going to you know 
eyeball it and muck around. So right now this looks pretty promising. Let's change back to the camera, put those preview lights on again, and then make some final adjustments. So with the plane here, let's let's rotate this a little bit, I guess in uh, which direction is it? No, that's not it. Uh, is it the Z? No, that's not it. It's of course the last one I'm trying. No, that's not it either. How interesting. I'm gonna just tilt it forward like that a little bit. And I think for that, I'm gonna go and change this over to the uh, local settings. For that, I need my tool settings open, which are of course not open. Let's go to panes and find them, tool settings. There we go. They can be docked right down there. And with tool settings selected, I can say up here, use local coordinates, use world coordinates. There we go, that'll give us a bit of a different thing to play with. It's still not exactly doing what I want it to do, but that's probably because it's it's a little wonky there anyway. I'm just gonna go get rid of that. and just, just live with this thing as it was before. And perhaps I'm gonna go and change that back to local coordinates. I don't know why it's not working as well as I thought it was going to be working. I'm going to go bring that down and just scale it up. I can use the little white blob in the middle to scale it up overall, just so that it covers our whole camera frame, that basically my camera doesn't see anything except for this white stuff. And that, of course, is being replaced by fog now. So let's go over and, with the plane selected, head over to the Surfaces tab. On plane if this has been created with das studio 4.10 by the way you need to you need to convert that into iray properties i'm in das studio 4.11 so it's already got those iray properties in there under base we can essentially set the diffuse color of our object and this is currently set to a medium gray here with this this little triangle icon you can add a picture to it so anything that has a triangle icon can take a texture and that'll be the, the texture I've prepared one earlier I'm gonna go and browse there right now and that is I believe the fog plane just a PNG looks white I'll show you exactly what it looks like in a moment we're gonna open that and hey presto we see nothing that's not exactly what we want is it and that's because right now the rest of the plane isn't transparent so if we were to try and render this let's go and save this again i'm more like you know belt and braces kind of be on the safe side kind of guy let's see what it looks like when we render it um the the thing is it just doesn't have transparency yet and we can give it that in a moment so we can convert our fog plane into a, a regular like you know fog diffuse texture and uh what's it called a transparent texture there we go i know i know it's at, at one point i will find the right words it's quite crazy maybe we should have a bit of tea maybe that'll help Thank you for hanging in there with me. I got this really nasty comment there a couple of days ago from somebody who watched a stream uh, for a pre-record from like a few weeks ago. And he said, my God, you're tedious. You're so long and boring and it's terrible. And I was thinking, yeah, it's, it's, you know, thanks. <laughs> we, we all have our days. It is the nature of live television. So I do apologize for my d -d 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 stammering here. So anyway, let's take a look and how we can make this thing transparent now. That's also on the surfaces tab and that's under the geometry tab. That's where iRay keeps the, the good bits for transparency. And what we're looking for is the cutout opacity. So if I were to move the slider around, then the whole thing is gonna be less transparent. So uh, we could just invisibilize the whole thing, but that's not really what we wanna do. We wanna leave it on full whack here and then go and once again hit that little triangle button and browse for another texture which is the fog trans i've called it so i'm going to go and add that and as soon as we do that we get to see that we now tr make everything transparent that's in the scene except for the texture that i've just applied there which is the fog plane That is interesting, isn't it, DreamLab? Yes, exactly. Hey, I know this is free, but hey, it's just not good enough. I need extra. And you go, really? It's crazy, isn't it? Unbelievable. <laughs> I, thank you, David. Very nice. It is one of those things. I, I hardly rehearse these things. I, I look at the principles and thinking, oh, this is something good to show. And then 
when it actually comes to crunch time doing it live it's just com- a completely different ball game mm-hmm. on my pre-records i often run through this thing and then i make a take and then when there's something that's not quite working out then i'm, I'm adding something else in the post and i'm tidying things up like all the ums and ahs they go and fly out of the window and that makes for a nice and tight viewing experience but sometimes you know it's just when it's when it's live it just doesn't work that way and it's also partly i find that very appealing because it also shows hey in 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 usually in tutorials things go perfect all the time and reality just doesn't work that way you click a button you expect it to do something it doesn't do it on that day you know you think well that's kind of the end of my career what am i going to do now i find that very refreshing when that happens live on air as well so right now we should have a bit of uh, fog on our picture here and if we switch that off then we can see that the image is much clearer i'm not sure if that comes across here in the in the stream i'm also not sure if i've got both my cards active for rendering let me just have a look at that oh yeah i've switched one off earlier <laughs> trying to make the computer not crash so this is just rendering with one card and the other card just takes care of, of takes care of streaming so maybe we'll we'll just leave it like that so essentially if you render both images out and once they've tidied up and once the uh, noise is gone and all that you will see that there's a uh, much more atmospheric look to this if there's a fog plane on there and of course then the other thing you can do is yeah i can i think you can just about see it when i when i activate the plane it just gets this little foggy noisy thing you can if i were to move my camera around now then of course i change the position of the plane relative to the camera so to avoid that i can just drag the plane on top of the camera and that'll parent these two objects and as a result i can now go ahead and move my camera wherever i like in the scene and i will always retain this kind of atmospheric foggy thing at the at the top there that's kind of cool let me show you this when i'm i'm going to go out of the iray view and i'm going to go back into look at that you can probably better see it in the texture shaded view yeah look this is this is exactly the kind of the kind of fog that i'm talking about yeah this is actually very visible there is a way you can actually you don't have to have two maps you can literally create if you're in the surface properties of your plane and you head over to the base you can use the what's it called the um, transparency map (laughs) as the diffuse map also so but if you do that and let me just uh, show you what happens the fogginess tends to go away you can still see it a little bit at the bottom of the screen here but it means that you see a lot less of the effect both in the render and in the preview so i would recommend to have two maps and i'll show you in a moment how to make those it's just nicer to have a better preview there and if you need a stronger effect you can always enhance that on the texture or you can you know you can do all kinds of things you can you just enhance the the craziness of the fog another thing i haven't prepared yet but i'm going to show you that as well because we have we have endless time so it's a you know it's a nice nice idea to do that you can not only can you cover the whole frame of the camera so oh yeah that's that's actually what i was going to show you wasn't it <laughs> there we go so if i now go and select my camera and uh, you can just about whoops you can just about see the fog plane there in the front can you no you can't can you i can't oh this is the fog plane here this is the fog plane so if i now move my camera the fog plane moves with it I, that's that's the only thing i wanted to show so i mean it's kind of you know that's that's how it works if i weren't if i hadn't parented the plane to the camera it it'll mean that the uh, that i'd have to kind of adjust that manually so once you've adjusted this and I'll switch back to my camera. I can now even use my my scene navigation tools and just keep moving anywhere. And you can see that the fog plane is staying on top of my camera there. No matter where I live, where I move, there's always going to be a foggy atmospheric nightmare going on there. Like on this piece where we're supposed to, probably not supposed to go. Yeah, we're definitely not going to be here. This is, this is not what we're supposed to use for, for uh, shooting our scenes. But this is one thing I do like about uh, stonemason scenes. You can literally just go anywhere and then just decide, hey, what, what kind of a back alley do I need here? I mean, buy this set and you get literally 20 different scenes. You can do it from the top. You can, let's go at the, let's go to the very top. You can even, I mean, if, you, if you're really into it, you could, whoops, 
just trying to get the buttons right here there we go you can even put things into these little rooms here very cool i absolutely love stonemason scenes you can get a nice overhead view here too Oops. yeah make that nice and wide have whatever a gun deal going down here it's just absolutely cool and as I said, no matter where you move that camera now with that fog plane mounted, it'll be it'll be always there. I'm going to amend my Patreon post, by the way. I've, I've already shown you how to create animated fog with Carrara that you can use as an overlay for animations. That works really well. But I'm also going to do this. Uh, I'm going to include the assets that I'm making here and this asset and a few others that I'm making so that my Patreon supporters can access that and then use these things in Das Studio or in any program really you can use these in photoshop and use them as an overlay as well so apart from having this as a full frame effect in front of the camera you can also make them so right now i didn't really take care of what the plane looks like on the outsides but you can make it so that you can have smaller planes where the where the fog is literally uh, kind of growing out of a, a piece of street gutter or something and stonemason built stonemason has built this into the scene in a few places i don't know if it's in here or in the other set but he's made this in with a very similar effect and i'm going to show you how to do this much smaller so that you can use them as a splat so splat is also a plane the same principle but it's further away from the camera and it has a kind of a, a a softer edge so that it looks like more of a fog that rises up from a manhole cover that sort of thing and that you can then turn so that it's perpendicular to the camera in your scene so i'm going to show you that next because it's kind of you know yeah exactly smock like that's right so if yeah also if you have if this is a bit too much you can just turn the uh, opacity down there of the plane let me show you how that works if this is if like this effect from the top here with the with the sunlight coming and that looks a little bit much for me as well so if you do that select the plane select the surfaces tab and on the surface tab on the base tab you can have um, you can uh, where is it where is it it's a good question how would you do that <laughs> I don't even know it's a very good question how would you decrease that effect would it be perhaps with the cutout opacity would you just turn that down no because that makes the whole thing less transparent yeah no you could probably do that yeah cutout opacity is the answer perhaps i'm just you know i'm just thinking out loud here i don't actually know if that's the solution but it looks like it might be so cut out opacity full whack is full whack smock effect And then bringing that down, yeah, I guess that would that would have an effect. See, this is something I would have probably researched had this been a pre-record. <laughs> but hey, we need to see it on the screen, so we're going to have a full whack open. Let's go and see how to make the smaller versions of that. For that, I haven't got an asset, so I need to go and prepare that. I can show you how to make these, these fog assets. Um, and that is by the use of my trusty friend Carrara also a DAS program and it's one of those things that hasn't seen an update in many many years and uh, it, it is it is a great little program it's an all-round uh, nature character modeling rendering thing it has so many things I keep using it every once in a while yes a night scene absolutely that that would that would work well yeah absolutely so in Carrara, they have this thing uh, called uh, they have this thing called the fog primitives. So in Carrara, you do everything with primitives. Uh, first of all, I'm going to bring up my production frame here. That's my 16 by 9 frame, and I'm going to switch off these two panels here, and I'm going to drag in a fog primitive. That's the one you can insert apart from spheres and cubes and vertex objects and all that you can insert things like fire fountain uh, clouds oceans even very exciting stuff that you can do that it has replicators it literally has the full monty and i'm going to leave it maybe at this size maybe maybe make it slightly bigger yeah make this whole thing slightly bigger 
and move it up somewhat like like this and to see the effect of this we're only seeing a box right now but if i press Control r it'll render this whole scene and that is what it gives me so that gives me a little representation of what my fog now looks like it doesn't look like much right now but i've got thousands of parameters that i can tweak to make this look into something that i'd like to see so i'm going to go for something like a small square in the middle here and i could adjust my camera for that as well i won't do that i'm just going to leave it in, in 16 by 9 here and uh, i'm going to make sure this is slightly further down so it begins at the very bottom and it'll have some kind of more you know swirly bits in there and that is uh, that's done on the right hand side here I'm not sure if you can see that but these are all the fog properties that i can set so um, the quantity i'm going to increase swirls maybe a swirl size uh, edge fall off i'm going to go and leave that i don't want to change too many things but uh, in order to see this in action oh yes i'm going to go and drag this down a little bit like maybe like so i'll see what that looks like Control r renders the image again there it's cool the position is happy I'm, I'm i'm happy with that maybe i'm going to use a bit of edge fall off so that it's slightly less uh, slightly less big on the edges just a little trial and error. Yeah, there we go. That's that's nice. And perhaps I'm gonna make it a little more patchy too. Uh, so patchiness, add a bit of patchiness to that. Yeah, nice one. Could do it even more patchy. Yeah, you see, this is too patchy. We don't like that. Let's let's go. Let's go. It's too much going to town with the patchiness there. I see we have a dual bilingual trilingual chat going on there. That's very exciting. It is that is the benefit of an international audience, isn't it? Very cool stuff. Sure, Christina. Uh, well, we'll see you soon. Okay, so um, oh sorry, I needed to stay in the render room and save this thing out. So I need to save it out in, in two versions really. Uh, one is, and that's on the output setting here, just a, a brief introduction to Carrara while we're talking about it. So we're gonna use PNG or ping, PNG, I, I, like, I like saying PNG, and I'm gonna render this with an alpha channel as well. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go and say file, save as, and I'm gonna say fog2, that's what I'm gonna call it cool name fog2 that's really all i need from carrara i'm going to go and just minimize that and open my trusty friend the photoshop and then i can i can turn that into the two versions that i need the first version is more or less done already that's the transparent png image that's now being rendered which looks completely white if we're going to load that in in a second it'll just look completely white but that's because transparency plus a little bit of fizzy white on the top that really doesn't doesn't look like much oh yeah this was my this was my split here we don't really need that anymore yeah, i don't want to save that and that is the fog plane i was talking about this is the the first fog plane here so that's the one that that fills the screen oh nice photoshop kept that very cool so if i when i bring that in then it just looks like this because that's just you know white stuff on on transparency obviously that's that's not you know doesn't doesn't show as much but if we add a plain background color to it then the black bits uh, versus the white bits one of them is being cut out i always forget which one i must i must admit so uh, i've worked out if i make the background black then that works as a, a, an opacity map that's, that's what i'm saying so let's go and open our image that we've just made which i believe was on here fog 2 that's it and uh, that is it so this thing here now that is our fog and we can probably crop this down i think i'm just going to leave it as it is in, in 16 by 9. usually if you'd use this in a software you probably use a square image it doesn't really matter we're going to skew it in that studio anyway so i'm going to leave it as it is this is fog 2 and i'm going to go and uh, on the bottom right here i'm going to go and add uh, just a solid color to this thing in photoshop and i'm going to use uh, just a solid black here click OK and then just move that solid color underneath my fog layer and now I can see what I just saw in Carrara and this is in fact what Carrara would have saved had I not saved this with uh, alpha channel now we're gonna go and save this you can save it 
as a PNG, but it won't have transparency anymore. Or you can save it as a JPEG, it doesn't matter. The, those transparency maps don't need to have a transparency channel. I'm gonna call that FOC2Trans. And then I'm gonna bring it back into the DAS. So I guess we're done with our atmospheric plane. Let me just switch that off here. Just make it invisible in the scene navigator. Then that'll turn that fog effect right off there while retaining all its properties. So uh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna just, I'm still looking at the camera. So I'm gonna go and uh, go further down again. Down in the scene. And I'm gonna see if I can Maybe take a take a side shot here. Oops. Ah. Or just you know not use that. Just use a regular navigation for this now. Uh, I'll see if if this is our scene and I want something like here rising up. I can have multiple things, so I'll I'll, I'll start maybe with one and I'll just be somewhat here. Whoops. I'm so sorry. I'm on the wrong scene on it. <laughs> but I thought there's me thinking of just shown you the whole picture and that's just not what I did there. Ooh, my God, how many languages have we got going on there? Dreamlab, you speak Japanese? That's awesome. I love it. That is very cool. So how can you, this is something that I've, that's always fascinated me about the Japanese language, the fact that you've got the Japanese characters, but you could also kind of, I guess, phonetically translate that into into English characters is that how it works can you communicate that way very interesting stuff I've just heard from my deaf colleague uh, at the at Publix where I work that there is a difference between sign language in different languages as well so it's not just sign language is not international which is what I had always assumed it's not it's uh, you get Spanish sign language versus English sign language that's crazy I had no idea very cool so let's bring in another plane, just like we did before. Perhaps I'm gonna go over to the transparent, transparent, the perspective viewport for this, and just add one in here under create, new primitive, a little plane just like before, there it is, oh, with my universal selector uh, over here. I think we're gonna go leave that square for now, and just, just roughly, sketch it out once we've set up the materials so with that selected I can by the way this sometimes what happens in larger scenes I thought I'll, I'll mention it if you don't click the object you want like if you click this then you see that in the scene navigator this UF6 building 05 opens up and sometimes it can be drastic when you when you accidentally select something like the lamp here that you really didn't want to select and you go there and you accidentally move it down and you think ah oh, man I've ruined stonemason scene that's not what I wanted to do if it's not deliberate you can of course undo that but there is a very handy feature here uh, if you close your scene down there's this little arrow so that the, the eyeball means make it visible or invisible but this little arrow next to it means make it selectable or unselectable. So you can just make that unselectable. And now this is just none of that can be selected anymore, you'd think. Sometimes it works better than other times. I think there's, a, there's another magicness to it. I think you have to hold either shift or control down to make it, to make it unselectable in literally the whole scene. Or was it alt? There was a way. Select. Yeah, I need to read up on that. But there's, there's basically, there's a way, there's a way to make it unselectable. So this little X next to the arrow means things are not selectable. Just thought I'd mention that. But back to our plane. Let's set up our plane with the correct materials now. So plane two, I'm gonna call that uh, maybe fog small. And then our other planes is, the, remember that, is the fog full perhaps so that's the that's the fog that fills the whole the whole scene so in fog small I'm gonna go over to the surfaces tab and once again in Dash Studio 4.11 I don't need to do anything other than just uh, marvel at the all the IRA properties there if I had done this in 4.10 I'd have to go select this thing and uh, head over to my presets under shaders 
you'd have to go under IRA and then double click this thing here, the IRA Uber base first. That's important because otherwise objects created, primitives created in Dash Studio 4.10 and earlier will have, by default, will have their 3D light properties applied and not the IRA properties. One of those little traps that, you know, we fall into from time to time. But this thing will convert that. So the IRA Uber base will convert your object into IRA properties while retaining most surface options. So like, you know, certain textures are retained. Um, yeah, just thought I'd mention that. Hello, Calm, how are you doing? Very good to see you. And also, hello, uh, Jasper and Julian. Sorry, I didn't see you there earlier. Very cool, very good to see you again. We're just building some fog in Dash Studio. So, you know, join in, join the party. With this plane selected on the base, I can go and select my FOC2 plane that we made in Carrara. And that's not going to have the, the correct aspect ratio, but at least it's the same aspect ratio that the corresponding transparency map has, which we're going to set up under geometry, under cutout opacity. Let's go and bring in the FOC2 trans on there. And that should now give us a little bit of a preview of what our fog might look like. I can't actually see anything. That's terrible. Oh yeah, there we go. I can I can just about see it. It's it's rotated the wrong way around. Can you see that? This is technically the, the ground. So I need to turn this around like so for the for the fog to rise up. There we go. Let me make that accurate and just type in 90 degrees here. There we go. Other than that, I need to make this thing a bit larger. And I guess, oh, look at that. We're actually just by sheer coincidence, we're, we're on top of one of those manhole gates here. That's kind of cool. I think I want to go and turn my object around in the X axis by about 90 degrees. So that it kind of sits on this grating here. That's, that's, my, that's my plan here. If you follow the map professor's instructions here. Oh yeah, that's, so this is gonna be zero. There, perfect. There. So that'll that'll work, I guess. Let's see what it looks like in a render. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. Let's have a look. You can make it smaller on the bottom. You can you can uh, soften out the edge and everything. So that's you know that's all stuff that you can do. Ooh, thank you, David. That's very nice of you. Thank you so much for the super chat donation. Woo! -hoo. I hope we're seeing this amazing animation. Yes, it is. Woo! -hoo. That is so cool. And he's walking on the road. Look at that. I mean, if that doesn't fit into the scene, perfect timing, David. How exciting! That's very cool. I love seeing that little guy. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> How exciting. Do you know, this is, one, this is another thing about Mixer that, that uh, some games have implemented controls that you can give to your viewers. So it's a very game focus there. But you can literally do it so that you give full controls over to the viewers and they can then dictate how the game progresses, like make it harder, make it easier, throw in some obstacles or whatnot. Very cool idea that, very cool. So sadly though, my effect isn't actually showing up as much as I wanted it to. So uh, I don't think there's a way to make this more intense other than simply uh, duplicating the little fox small map and perhaps also uh, trying, to, trying to move around and see if, it's, uh, if it works better from a different angle with a different type of background here. I'm also gonna put my denoiser on, I've decided. Denoiser, super nice feature in Dash Studio 4.11 under the render settings, under filtering. Ah, oh, I can't get enough of the denoiser. It's of course disabled by default, so you have to enable it. You have to say post denoiser, uh, make it available, and then enable it as well. And as soon as you do that, you'll see that the grain disappears much quicker than before. So it, after a few iterations, it kicks in and goes boom, and then there's no more grain, like now. So it looks a little bit smeary but as you let the render go on it just goes and becomes clearer and clearer and that's very very good tool to speed up your animations they're very exciting stuff so in order to increase my effect here my smog effect i can just duplicate the 
the fog plane. I could either intensify the effect in Carrara or in Photoshop, but I can also with it in place, I can just head over here and say duplicate node. And now I've got two fog nodes in the same place. And you know, I, in an ideal world, I would actually see a difference here now, but uh, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not very lucky today, I'm, I, it appears. How many planes do I have to duplicate there for that, for that thing to show up? You can even get creative and turn these planes uh, in an angle from one another. So you, you make two and then you kind of you, you move them like this. You've got to be careful because the, the thing in the middle is being, uh, is being intensified more. So it'll, be, it'll look more white in the middle. I'll show you that in a minute. Oh, look at that. Look at that. From this angle, we can see it now. I may have had to do something with the normals. That's very possible. But this is the effect I was going for here. This, this kind of effect now. Steam rising up from some manhole cover there. And as we let the render go down a little bit further, I don't know what you prefer. Do you prefer it with the, with the grain or without the grain? I, I prefer the, the denoiser, but sometimes the effect that I'm trying to show here now, it only comes out after a certain amount of time, whereas with the grain enabled still, you can kind of see it pretty much immediately and it tends to go away with the <laughs> thank you david it tends to go away with the um as soon as uh, the denoiser kicks in let's try it thank you biscuits i appreciate that you like it that's very cool let's switch the denoiser off again and uh, just go and see that see that difference there so right now it's grainy but i can see very much see the fog here and because the denoiser isn't kicking in i can i can still see the fog now so yeah there we go but as I said, we can animate this thing as well. That's cool. You can animate the fog in Carrara. <coughs> you can make all kinds of exciting things. But these two assets, the full version, so we can add, we can literally add, because we've got it still in there, we can add a full fog in front of the camera. So now we've got like the double fog going. We've got some atmospheric fog going on around here. And we've got the manhole cover fog doing that thing as well so that should make for an exciting render i shall post that on renderosity later and of course don't forget patreon supporters get a get access to these assets so you can go and play around with them if you if carrara happens to be on sale pick it up sometimes it's available for 20 30 dollars it's such a cool tool to have it's no longer updated i don't think uh, despite what what das say they no longer push carrara they push hexagon which is a terrible choice but you know carrara has got so much more powerful very very um cool tool to have in your in your toolbar for things like that you can create fires like that as well very cool maybe i'll show you that next time i put a little fire here and there that's a cool idea other than that i believe that was it for today my friends thank you so much for joining me it was a pleasure having you thank you so much for the super chat donation dave i'm, I'm glad you liked it and uh, if you have any other questions please drop them in as comments i will be more than happy to uh, chat with you and uh, see if we can um, you know address them in future tutorials tomorrow is an exciting day tomorrow i'm going to go deep sea diving again in subnautica and uh, this time we're going to try and build the prawn suit Woo that's going to be exciting so join me for that if you're up for a bit of um, just you know watching nice real-time 3d graph 3d graphics and to have a lovely chat about 3d and all the rest of it then of course monday very exciting stuff you can go and uh, watch me play portal so portal both hopefully both on mixer and on youtube so we're going to try and get this restream thing going i'm fascinated by this technology and we'll see how it works we tried um david christina and rod we've and i we tried the portal stream on mixer and that was mind-blowing the latency super low very exciting it's like having a real-time conversation there and woo, biscuits thank you so much for the super chat donation let me just go and can you come back to this maybe we can see the little guy walk on the plane again that'd be so cool that was really really cool thank you yes <laughs> very fit that's so exciting look he look at him go how exciting so funny <laughs> so that i'm going to try on monday restream with portal and i'm going to try and put that out on mixer as well as youtube as well as twitch as well uh, maybe that, that'll be it. Let, let's just try one to three. That, that'll be it. My friends, thank you so much. I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Take care.